on the 10th anniversary of his death, here, the wisdom of Chuck Colson. For the Colson Center, I'm John Stone Street. This is Breakpoint. Ten years ago this week, Chuck Colson went to be with the Lord. After his time in the White House, and then in prison, and then in leading the largest ministry to prisoners and their families in the world, the great passion of the last few years of Chuck's life was advancing Christian worldview. He worked and he prayed so that, as he often put it, the church would start to be the church. One of the first projects after I joined the Colson Center team was a curriculum project called Doing the Right Thing. This film series reflected how Chuck understood those issues that plagued the prisons and the rest of our society. You see, upstream from the brokenness and evil was a lack of moral formation, an abandonment of right and wrong, a neglect of virtue. In this film series, Chuck issued a clarion call for Christians to influence our communities with a Christian worldview. Christianity was, after all, a better way of being human. Here's Chuck Olson. I have a peculiar habit in my life. I read the Bible every morning, but I also read the New York Times <laughs> through clenched teeth. I have to. <laughs> I do it because I write breakpoint radio broadcasts every day, and I usually get half my breakpoints out of the New York Times, out of the, some of the silly things they say. It's wonderful. I should be paying twice as much for my subscription. But one morning I picked it up, and let me tell you what I read. Thomas Friedman wrote a column about why America was number one in the world by all ratings and all polls and all standards and all measurements for years and years and years, and all of a sudden it appears number 11 on the list. What happened? So Friedman writes a column in which he says, he restates the whole thesis of all of his books, which is that uh, the world is flat, everybody's got access to all the same resources and tools, and therefore we're all equal now. But here's what he says at the end about why America is number 11. China and India have been catching up to America not only via cheap labor and currencies, they're catching up with us because they now have free markets like we do, education like we do, access to capital and technology like we do, but most importantly, listen, most importantly, values like our greatest generation. They have a willingness to postpone gratification. Christians, that's a Christian virtue, deferred gratification paying your bills, providing for your kids in the future. In a flat world where everyone has access to everything, values matter more than ever. And listen to this coming from a secular Jew. Right now, the Hindus and Confucians have more Protestant Protestant ethics than we do, and as long as that is the case, we will be number 11. All of you know that I spent my life, last 35 years, going into prisons. I love it. I have a passion for it, to bring the gospel to prisoners. Absolutely love. But I discovered early on that the reason the prisons were being filled wasn't all the sociological theories about crime that we hear generally. It was the fact that the study at Harvard in 1986 established this by two great social scientists. Lack of moral training during the morally formative years. And it hit me that we are raising a generation that lacks male role models, the family has broken down, these kids aren't learning character. Where does character come from? It comes from habits that you learn in the family first. That's the first basic structure. That's Aristotle once said, that's the school, first school of human instruction. It comes from associations that you become part of where you find your identity and you find role models in other people. That's how characters form. You cannot teach character. All these courses going in public schools today about teaching character, it's a joke because you can't teach character. You learn character. You learn character by living with people who create an environment which is righteous, where people live righteously in that environment. That's how you do it. So I thought to myself, this is really a problem, and and I had had this experience at Harvard, and then I'd spoken at schools all across the country. I ended up speaking at 2nd Marine Division, where I'd started out as a platoon commander in 1950s, and uh, the commanding general invited me back to give a speech on ethics. Grizzled up old master sergeant stood up to me, and he said, Mr. Colson, which is more important, loyalty or integrity? Ah, got it. Wish I'd thought about that when I was in the Oval Office. (laughs) Whoa. He really got it. But the result of this, when I was realizing what was happening in the prisons, was I thought, I've got to do something about ethics. Wouldn't it be something if five million Americans started to do the right thing? You'd turn the country upside down. It can happen. I want to see. That's my goal. That's why I'm standing here today. I want to see five million people. 2% of the population of this country, start doing the right thing. Start practicing virtue. 
That was Chuck Colson describing the potential influence he believed that Christians could have on our society. Please join us tomorrow to hear a clip from Chuck Colson's very last public address, delivered at the 2012 Wilberforce Weekend. For the Colson Center, I'm John Stone Street with Breakpoint.